Hello and welcome to Hidden Existence. Hope everybody's doing all right out there. Uh, with me, of course, my co-host is here, Jason. How are you doing, Jason? So far, so good. Cannot complain. Cool, cool. What's the weather like at the moment? Uh, it's Texas, so the only answer we have is hot. hot. Um, actually, it's not that it's not that hot today. Hold on, let me double check here. Did you get a lot of wind? Uh, sometimes. Actually, we had a like a tiny dirt devil hit the house the other day. It's not technically a dirt devil because it's all because we we're still the grass plains, but it was basically sort of like that, just a teeny tiny thing, not really a tornado, but just like a teeny tiny like, thing. Yeah, it's one of those like like again if it, if it hits the you know like dirt you see it all come up like it, it, it we call them dirt devils or dust oh. devils they're not that bad hold on what is the weather today we don't really weather. get uh, we don't really get them here I guess we do on flat land in windier places maybe but I never noticed them um, yeah it's only hundred today so oh okay yeah, yeah it's gonna be one hundred and two tomorrow so yeah it's only about hundred today so we're yeah. good it's not much is it um, no. Nah. Hello to everybody in the chat. Hello, Jack, Val, Sharon, um, Max Powers is here. Sugar Bridges. Howdy. Um, the non boss continuum. Um, don't want to keep repeating because I'll end up doing that. What Sugar Bridges, Jack. <laughs> I know. Charles, I'm your Huckleberry. How are you doing? Um, so what news have you got? You've got you're promoting something now, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so Choopy Rules uh, is finally out. Uh, it's it's a comic strip I did, but I kind of realized you always need to look ahead, right? So it's been retooled to be on TikTok and YouTube as uh, as like little shorts. Uh, so yeah, if you're on, you know, most I think most everyone's on YouTube. You can go to Choopy Rules, C H U P I E R U L Z uh, yeah, exclamation Thanks. point. So Send me it in the in the I'll, yeah 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 I'll do that and I'll, and I'll put it up yeah I'll grab it for you um yeah but yeah no it's uh it's it's a it's just a com it basically just like your you know any other comic strip but it's a uh, it's about a chupacabra and uh, his friends and their adventures at Miko Duel's Mexican Cantina and Sushi Bar. All right, hilarity okay. ensues. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds so yeah, good. I'll send you a link. You send me the link and I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it in the description as well so people can go and check it out. Um, sounds good. Uh, one other thing, though, for uh, Charles, um, he has uh, Charles, I'm your Huckleberry. And that is the the term uh, that's been sort of popularized over the ages uh, from the movie Tombstone is I'll be your Huckleberry problem is he doesn't say i'll be your huckleberry he's actually saying in the, in the classic quote is i'll be your huckleberry problem is he you know he he, he delivered it with that southern draw uh, um yeah he's so from, he's not from the south though i don't believe he's charles yeah uh, well i mean he's he's it's it's a line from uh from tombstone so it's it's all good but yeah the the the, the appropriate the problem is everyone says i'll be your huckleberry right that's what everyone says the thing is the actually correct quote is i'll be your huckle bearer mean like a um uh, like a paul bearer the huckle was the thing on a on caskets that you carry so what he's saying is in the movie right uh the phrase i'll be your huckle bearer means oh i'll be the one carrying your 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 casket because he's going to be the one to shoot him he's from texas so there you go there yeah, you go it's even better than being from the south he's from texas there you go um so charles don't know if you're gonna change your uh youtube name now Charlie. <laughs> well the problem is most people won't get it see here's the worst part he, him saying i'm your huckleberry everyone gets what he's saying now yeah that's the worst part of it is that if he were to change it to being correct no people one would go, understand what, what does that mean that. exactly yeah. they'd be like what does that mean but now yeah. everyone gets it yeah i don't even know what huckleberry is i never even knew what huckleberry i thought it was like a you know strawberry or a blackberry well there is a huckleberry that's the thing is huckleberry oh, is a real berry no it absolutely is that's why everyone assumed that's what he was saying they thought it was because in the the line is it's like okay so he's saying some kind of shine on like no one really looked into it the thing is it's actually huckleberry so just one of those weird things about history learning something every day well every sunday every sunday uh, every sunday definitely uh, there's a link there in the chat. I'll put it in the uh, description later on after the show. Yeah. Um, 
So, so yeah, we've got two, and the the voiceovers are terrible. I'm debating uh, not. Originally, I was going to not do it, or let me phrase it: I was going to stop after episode two and just do like you know sounds, um, or uh, you know music and stuff over it. The thing is, people seem. My wife and best friend hate the voiceovers I do, and everyone else is like, "No, no, they're fine." I'm like, "Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still debating <laughs> at this point, so we'll have to wait and see." Have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. Um, ginger cheese, ginger cheese. What am I on about? Ginger free, ginger. <laughs> oh, I get it. Can you not yeah. just narrow this down to CFGS? Anyway, Daniela thought Huckleberry was a butt nugget. Did no, you, did you think that's what I thought it was? What's a butt nugget anyway? You have to tell well, me. What that, do you well, think? What do you think a butt nugget is? I, I think you know those little. It's the th- seriously not no. I'm not doing this. I have no idea what it is. Please explain. You don't know. I well okay. So here's the thing. I don't know what, how she means it, but sugar bridges I think is right. That's a dingleberry. Those are the. That's a, it's a, it's the um dingle dongle. It's it, something gets caught up on your uh on the hairs down there. Oh yeah yeah ugh, mm, so yeah. Spiteful. Um, but it could just make him something completely different to somebody else. Yeah, and that's the fun thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a dingleberry. Huckleberry. Uh, a huckleberry is a real berry. There's a real fruit out there called huckleberry. Okay. But uh, yeah, not what's being referenced in that line, and certainly not what Cheese Freak thinks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought huckleberry was was tough to explain. Yeah. Jeez. Maybe if you just leave people's names alone. Well. Like, I would- yeah, I, I didn't lead, lead to. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Cling on. I like Sharon's line. Cling on. on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Eric, what's that? What's that, Max? I don't know. What is that? Sorry, that's a bit. Yeah. One I don't know. Mm. One word I don't know. Um. So yeah. They well, pop look, up every once in a while. Yeah. Well, while people are thinking about what a um, butt nugget means to them, um, I'll tell you uh, something that went on locally. Well, I mean, when I say locally, it's like 40 odd miles away, which isn't too bad, but it is in an area where I'm I'm working. Oh, is it? Is that the posh name for it then? Oh, gotcha. That must be the scientific the posh, term. Like the Latin yeah. term for it or something, um, probably. Um, so. 40 odd miles away from me is the Lake District. And I've told you before, there's a, there's a, it's, it's a mountain area with loads of lakes. You can see them all. Yeah. Uh, just there. There's a lot of them. Um, there's one there. It's a, on the top right. It's called Ullswater Lake. And it's stunning. They're all like these, you know. And oh, wow. You can walk around them. Um, Wordsworth lived by one and wrote lots of his poems uh, by one of the lakes. I'm not sure which one it is. And um, so anyway, this week there's a a report in the paper and it says Lake District Park Rangers have been called to investigate the mysterious disappearance of geese seen being dragged underwater. Witnesses have reported wildflower why wild <laughs> oh, wow. I'm struggling tonight it's only 10 past 10 has the spirit of text <laughs> fallen upon you yeah i think it has um has reported wild fowl vanishing suddenly at all's water in recent days the electric street part said it was monitoring the waters but nothing out of the ordinary has been found. A boat worker, Wayne Owens, said he saw one goose dragged backwards across the water at speed before it went under. He said it, he was leaving Pooley Bridge on Thursday when he was shocked by what he saw. There was a large flock of grey like geese on the lake. When one, about 10 pounds in weight, a fully grown adult bird started flapping its wing furiously on top of the water before it got dragged backwards at speed and straight down. A keen, a keen swimmer in the lake, Mr. Owen says he's taking a break from going into the water. It has shaken me up and I don't want to get injured. I've been advised by someone who fishes in the lake. It could be a Wells catfish, but it would have to be 50 to 60 pounds in weight. 
Um, so after that, then another goose went down, uh, went under about 10 or 20 seconds later, uh, and there was no disturbance on the water. So what do you think that could be? Well, I mean, my first my first instinct is, oh, yeah, is a Wells catfish. I mean, they can get really, really large. Um, and Wells do tend to be um, predatory, was, if, I, if I remember correctly. Yeah. This was 144 pounds and caught 10 years ago in Essex. So, yeah. yeah big, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're quite large. Um, they're than the, they usually are way larger than the blue catfish we get down uh, down over here in the Channel Cats. But, yeah, I mean, a, a, a decent-sized catfish can, I mean... But drag See, that's what's weird. Because So, normally, catfish, when they... What they do is they open up their mouth, and there's actually this suction that occurs, Right. So I've, I mean, they can be predatory, but I've never heard of them doing something like this. Traditionally, they're scavengers, right? They're they're bottom feeders. It doesn't mean they can't be predatory, but I mean, I'm not saying it's never happened because I've seen catfish do some weird things from time to time. But that, the way it's described, it's, it's flap around and it's drug backwards and under. Mm. That's weird. Uh, again, my 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 first instinct is to say something like a well since they're native to the region wells cat just a big uh wells catfish but you know maybe just do, distributing some odd behavior but it's just it's it is odd um just the way it's the way it was described i mean it's just weird yeah well i'm gonna go up like i said i'm i'm, I'm working quite close to the area maybe like 10 miles off there uh at, near another lake mm -hmm. like windermere so i'm gonna go i think and have a look and who knows could be anything yeah could be. Could be no, yeah. I mean, seriously, there's so here's the thing, right? Um, just here in Texas, we've got so many invasive species of fish that it just all over the place. So I mean there's so the worst part is it could be um you know, it could be something uh again, whales catfish are native, but it could be anything, hmm. right? It could be something new that's been introduced, uh again from you know, a non-native species. I couldn't help but notice Scotland ain't that far away uh, from y'all, uh, you know, from that particular region. So who knows? I mean, mm. well, it's a, now, bit away. it's a bit away. It's, it max it isn't yeah. water. No, it's just kind of natural rainwater runoff water from the mountains. And that was actually going to be my next question: is it is it a lock or, technically, or is it just a just, just a lake? A lake. It's just so a lake. yeah. I mean, unless there's something, so, you know, underneath the wall, you know, some sort of like subsurface yeah, connection well, to the ocean. I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it's anything than, getting in. That's more than a possibility of um, mm -hmm. that. There's definitely connecting. Uh, you would think there's connecting um, channels. In fact, mm -hmm. if, we, if we have a look at the map. Um, there's all water there. You know, there's patches of water going through what look like. So who knows if there's any underwater caves right. or, or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it is it is definitely a ways. Because I know it's like Scotland oh. is over here or up on the top. Oh, it's up here. So this would be yeah. at least, um, <clears throat> well, from where I am, it's, a, it's about two hours up to here. Yeah. Um, so, again, being from Texas you know, being close is sort of a very relative term. You're like, oh yeah, it's two hours away. I'm like, oh, well that's <laughs> I'm like that. This that's... is tiny. I mean, England's yeah. tiny, literally. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, there to there is about two and a half hours, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a that's... little bit longer actually, because me to there is two hours. So Manchester of is 40 miles from me. So yeah, still it's, it's, you know, very mm -hmm. near, you know, going across here to here takes about four hours. You know, three and a half hours. Really? England is not, you know, London. Yeah. Me to London is like, I think, 300 miles, if that. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So we're, you know, teeny tiny yeah. when the big, in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to check it out. Um, cause I'm, no, you should. Because that's, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fascinated now. Yeah. And these is lakes it? are just beautiful. You know, oh, yeah, no, I stunning. 
I'd love to live next to something like that. Again, in Texas, we don't get actual trees. We have things that think they're trees. Um, oh, interesting thing I learned on the topic of trees for two seconds. Mesquite is not native to Texas. They got brought up here. I didn't know that. Anyway. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So the people from Texas are going to be like, what? Mesquite isn't, isn't native? It's, apparently it's not. So right. anyway. But yeah, back to this I, I, again. My my default is catfish, but man, that's the behavior's weird. That's, that's the so who knows that's, what it could be. Nessie's cousin could well be. Well, and this is the thing. Like we've seen Nessie out of the water, right on land. That's one of those. That's one of those things that that you know is often sort of missed out of the whole Nessie equation. Is people have seen it on land theoretically if it's Nessie, but. You know, there's all kinds of things out there. It doesn't have to be something overly exotic. It could be foreign, you know, some sort of a non-native species. It could just be a Wells catfish, got a hair, decided it likes goose. You know, who knows? Well, that's the other thing, because there's a lot of birds on on those lakes. And mm -hmm. I think if it would be eating them all the time, it's quite a big thing to go for, isn't it? It's not just like... Yeah, you'd have to be pretty big to go for a full-grown goose. Mm. I mean that's a that's not a small thing. No, no. So we'll see if I see anything. I mean, obviously, yeah. I can't. Um, you know, I don't have any. Um, don't have any tackle, Donald. Mm -hmm. Don't have any of that gear. So I'll just have to uh, see if I can get a picture and, and not a blurry one. If I see one, yeah. you know, it's the best I can do. Um. Zoe says, I was watching a document Beyond Impossible on YouTube. It's very interesting, but got to put in it. Exactly. Absolutely, Zoe. You've got to put it in existence on when it's live. So you can go back to Beyond Impossible. Um, I've just been watching stuff about K2, and it's a seven-day seven hike to base camp. Yeah. To, to yeah, K2 is massive. Yeah, but just getting to the base camp. It's a seven-day hike in a beautiful wow. place. Um, yeah, it's fascinating just how extreme to climb something so big. Yeah. But amazing at the same time. But it's not a simple journey. You know, there's mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot goes into it. And money. I think it's like, you know, oh, yeah. $50,000 or something to... Mm -hmm maybe something like that i don't think i'm far off yeah to, to, yeah, do that, to pay for all the everything you know yeah mm -mm. that's yeah it's insane um i mean there's a reason people didn't start really climbing mountains until very recently you know mm. i mean that fifty thousand dollars is just to get a chance at surviving that kind of a that kind of a trek i mean it's it's interesting uh, Iron Dogger mentions, um, what'd she say? I think she said, uh, walleye or pike. Oh, yeah, northern pike. Uh, and they don't, and they're, yeah, and, and pike get large, you know, they're, they're not a, that's not a small species of fish and they can be aggressive. So it's, it's interesting that they won't go after a goose. But whatever this thing is, did like you said, that's why it's, you know, so bizarre. Mm. Yeah, I just thought I'd uh, see if anybody else had heard of anything like that or seen anything like that happen. It will be interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name who climbed Everest that people just won't know about. Iron Dogger will know because I told her. I don't know if she can remember the name. If she does, put it in the, the chat. Um, Sir Edmund Hillary? No. Oh. oh, nightmare. Why can't I think? Do you remember... Jackie, it'll come. It'll come to me in a minute. Um. So, sorry, I'm just reading the chat again. Um. Yeah. I'll. Mm. That's it, really. Um. Pike will eat ducklings. They will. Yeah. Anything will eat the little herons. Will eat little ducklings, won't they? Oh yeah. yeah. But I mean, a duckling is one thing, but a goose, a full-grown adult goose, that's. I mean, that's something else entirely. Hold on. Fish that eat birds. 
fish that eat birds. Hmm. Fish that eat geese. That's it. Good way. Yeah, good. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so Wells catfish will go after birds. You know. Um, yeah. So I, I I've seen um, I've seen catfish wait on the bank, like like just off for things to come in and get drinks of water and then it will lunge like a killer whale like an orca right you see them beach themselves All and right, then yeah. i have seen them do that um so i'm not that's why I, I my instinct is just to say whales catfish because if a if a blue cat will do that and get something like a grackle i can see a, a wells catfish developing a taste for goose and just being like well that seems like an easy target and just whoop but again, it's just it's just how it's described as being drug under. It just, drug that's what feels it's weird. And under, it's uh, yeah, very disturbing. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what what is in there. I mean, definitely not. What be any whales in there? What be any any unusual things in the uh, in that lake? Well, there's obviously is something in there, but what it yeah. is, I don't know. Um, it's Alistair Crowley. He climbed Everest in 1902. Really? Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people know that. And it's an interesting yeah. story. He was quite a hard. I mean, you know, they weren't exactly kitted up back then with gear. And yeah. they, came, they ended up having to eat the dogs and all sorts of stuff. It's mm -hmm. a fascinating account. Um, huh. yeah, I had no idea. I found, out, I found out a few years ago. I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it takes all sorts of people to do it. I, I don't suppose they're even doing the kind of training um, that they do mm -hmm. now. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's insane. I mean, just people going in. I mean, those those conditions are as harsh as anything on the planet. I mean, honestly, it's like, hey, you've got to do. You got to choose one one thing to survive: either crossing a desert or climbing a mountain. I'd rather choose crossing the desert. I mean, just, it's just, it's that, I mean, it's literally that much harder to do. So, I mean, it's insane. Well, what about that? Um, with the Argentinian baseball team or something, they crashed in the Andes and it was a film oh, called yeah. I Survive. Yeah. I think it was that. They walked, I don't know how many miles out of that mountain range, three of them, I think, with like, barely anything mm -hmm. on their feet uh and yeah. they couldn't believe it the people who'd when, when, when they were recovered you know they couldn't believe that they'd managed to walk over mm -hmm. mountains and uh, just incredible i guess yes. what you do um to survive yeah now if you're i mean if you're when when, when survival's on the line people will do amazing things they just will, which is why I'm also like, you know what? If you got to survive something, yeah, be, you know, obviously always be prepared and do what you got to do. But choosing to go climb a mountain, that takes a, a certain, you know, that that takes a certain kind of person to be like, you know what? I'm going to randomly just go climb this mountain because it's there. Okay. Good for you. Hmm. Not, the, not me. I like no. the words flat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, flattened. I don't mind a bit of a hill. We've got yeah. nice hills around here to walk up. Um, recently, actually, one of them that you can see from the bay uh, called Helvellyn, uh, mm -hmm. they've just practiced uh, a paramedic going up it with um, a jetpack, basically, so they can get to walkers or, or injured hikers quicker. Really? Uh, yeah, I'll play the video because it's fascinating to see it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, he did it in about three and a half minutes and used, I can't remember how many, 16 litres of fuel. Um, I don't know how much these, oh, heck, what the hell is that? Um, what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm here now. Hold that one. Yeah, I definitely agree with Iron Dogger, though. Those people who sleep in those hammocks on mountainsides, that's insane. I'm like, nope, mm -mm, no. I believe in entropy too much for that. 
Um, here we go. Uh, sorry, I'm not seeing that. What we? I refuse to amount to then and have it. Yeah, yeah, it seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm getting. I'm, I want to buy a hammock for the garden. I mean, that's it. I just want it. Yeah, tree to tree. To tree that'll do. No, don't have to be complicated. Um, or daring. Um, or life threatening. To be honest. Here we go. <laughs> Turn the music off. <laughs> so three thousand one hundred foot. I mean, this is oh, just it's one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is going to save so much time because uh, you'd probably be be helicopter lifted out of a situation like this, but mm -hmm. the paramedics to walk up here, uh, any of these mountain ranges, the, these little mountains. I mean, I wonder how far he's off the ground just in the event of that thing not working. He looks pretty close, but it's hard to tell really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look too far off the ground, but definitely, he, you know, that that's, that's high enough to definitely break something. Oh, God, yeah. And look at, yeah, look at how fast. That's, that's impressive. Yeah. And how... Mm. They've worked out how much power mm -hmm. to for him to if there's like a limiter on it, because that, just how high could you go with one of these things, or are they just limited to, you know, a certain certain amount of height? What an experience, though, you, you know. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, having something like that would um would be amazing for rescues, like you said. You know. They're probably going to have to be helicoptered out, but the big problem is once you've got somebody there, they've got to get up there to you, and this is one of those times where minutes matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You just want to do that, don't you, if you could have the chance? <laughs> oh, a fly a jetpack? Absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think he had six days training. That was it. I oh, really? It. Yeah, so obviously, I mean, how how intense it was, I don't know. But what's he doing? He's done that. Um, how? I mean, I don't know how fast he's going. It doesn't really elevation and altitude and miles covered. Yeah, it doesn't give a speed. Yeah, well, he's near the trig point now, so he's done one point two miles in about three minutes, two minutes twenty something there. Mm -hmm. Three minutes thirty to the summit. That's pretty amazing. So you went 1.2 miles in three minutes. Three minutes 30, I think it was, yeah. Mountain rescue wow. response is normally 70 minutes. And that's that's insane. Yeah, three minutes 30 seconds. So pretty yeah. impressive. I mean, what sort of things do you have over there? I guess it's helicopters searching for people. Mm-hmm. Because your mountain ranges are huge, aren't they? Right. Well, it, I mean, obviously, it's not like every mountain around here. You know, out there is Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, but, you know, really for anything, if you've got, because there's lots of mountains and rain, in, in, like the Appalachians, right? There's all kinds of stuff like that where it's like, yeah, I mean, where if you're if you're injured, and you need help it may take you know there may not be a location for a, a helicopter to land and rescue you or the conditions the weather conditions may not be clear enough but something like this may be a lot more flexible so at least you, you can get help faster right and they the helicopter doesn't have to land yeah they can just send down whatever they need can't they mm -hmm. and they yeah. just got someone on the ground um i wonder if he can come back down on the jetpack probably I, not Hmm. I mean, well, okay. Now, the like, I don't think they could. I don't think you could get the injured person back using the helicopter using that no, kind of a, a cell. Does he have yeah. to walk seventy minutes back after getting up there? In yeah, he's got to carry it back. Well, I, I think the you know, I most of the jetpacks I've seen have a very very short, uh, are only value. You can only do it for a short duration because of the the fuel consumption requirements, but. 
who knows? I mean, that's part of the whole thing is everyone's trying to create, you know, think yeah, jetpacks are actually usable. Um, who knows? But I mean, even just someone who can get there in advance of the rest of the team to administer the kinds of uh, aid that might, you know, that could save somebody's life and find them, leave some sort of uh, a geo post so people can actually find you faster. Mm. Right. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. 18 to 20 mile an hour. That's um, pretty quick. Yeah, I just wonder how much it costs and whether or not, you know. Okay, hold on. Let me look. Go and find out. It's got to be used for other things as well, surely not just mountain. Oh, yeah. Just for covering ground, I guess. But does it always fly up? That's the thing. Can you fly back down with it? That's what I want to know as well. Um, let me have a look. Um, okay, so I'm seeing, apparently... Uh, a jetpack like that can cost between three hundred fifty to four hundred fifty thousand pounds. Okay, that's not cheap, is it? But yeah, that's again, not cheap. It it's the time it saves. Um, it's got to be worth it. It's got to well, be worth it for the manpower of you know. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing, right? So yeah, they're four hundred fifty thousand dollars now, right? Actually, I see one one dude bought one for four hundred forty thousand dollars. <laughs> Such a steal! Um, but if you can show that these things have a real world applica uh, applicability and is effective, not just it's not just some hot rod toy for people with cash, then there will be other, you know, then then everyone's going to want one. That means you can then. Uh, build them in mass in mass produce them so the cost comes down that's i mean that that's how it works everything is always expensive for that first generation and then that next generation the cost will come down mm. so if this is as effective as it looks like it can be and they can kind of prove it then generation two of these things are going to be one hundred fifty thousand dollars a piece again expensive but that's the kind of but that could, the, the cost of, the, of that kind of equipment that's um hold on what's the cost of like one well x-ray machines x-ray yeah. machines uh you know mri scanners and stuff like that that's the kind of money you're, you're talking about so um this i think would really pay off wouldn't it yeah uh, sharon air ambulance saved my son's life nearly two years ago wow that's amazing uh they do a pretty incredible mm -hmm. job don't they those guys um all rescue teams do but but flying aircraft as well uh, over an area and the things that they do it is pretty special um so okay on. about one hundred eighty two thousand dollars, or actually 183 basically to round up is the cost of one ambulance so yeah i mean generation two of these things again if they if they can prove as genuinely um beneficial as it looks like they can't, as this experiment sort of shows, yeah, you get enough people buying them, the cost will come down to something more reasonable, like $150,000. That's an ambulance. Right. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Flyby G says, flew from Doncaster to Cleethorpes, downwind dash into the wind, 11 mile an hour, downwind 58 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. um, what with one of those things, one of those jet packs. Um, was the first microwave expensive? We never had a microwave. My dad was like, like, that's not proper cooking. So was my mum. was like, I get a microwave. You have a microwave though, right? No. Really? No. Okay. I had a microwave. Someone gave me a microwave. This is how often I use it. I was given the microwave and I just cook my own food normally. But I was making breakfast one day. And I thought, oh, I'll have some baked beans with my breakfast and I'll heat them up in the microwave. And so I put them in the microwave and completely forgot about them. And then about six months later, I opened mm -hmm. the microwave door and the beans were there. And they looked all right still, a little bit dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's how often I use it. It's so little, I don't even... <laughs> well... Know. So to, to answer your question, in 1967, the countertop radar range was introduced. Um, 
and it cost four hundred ninety-five dollars at the time, which is about thirty-two hundred dollars today. All right. So they were quite expensive. Yeah. But uh, now you can buy them for, you know, a small one for like fifty bucks. Mm. You know, it's like they're oh. not expensive at all. Oh. So, that, which is the whole point, right? It, technology as it advances. Um, as things become popularized, the cost of, of R&D is taken by that first generation, which is always going to be the, you know, the wealthy. But they, they pay for all that in order to mass produce the, the second or third and fourth generations, which become much more affordable for, the, for everyone else. So, again, I'm interested in this technology. The jetpack is, you know, that's a great thing. But, but think about all the, other, all the other new technologies that are coming out, like the hover bikes. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, that's the, the, the problem with something like a helicopter is that um, it's very limited as, as far as where it can land, right? But something like a jetpack or even one of these smaller hover bikes um, where you can, you can, again, you can get off, you can go over uh, rough terrain very quickly, uh, but you can also land in areas that, you, that a, a, a helicopter may not be able to land. Yeah. Or in, in weather, a helicopter may not be able to land in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's right. But again, like I say, if, if there's someone somebody there on the ground, they don't need to land, do they? They just need to send down the, mm -hmm. what do you call it? They just need to get them up, don't they? Even if it's on a... A, yeah. um, oh. a board, a backing board. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah. There's ways of them doing it, so... Oh, there absolutely are. No, there absolutely are. But again, this again, someone in a jetpack that's more maneuverable, it's easier for them to get to where they are. The, the main point, though, is you can get someone with real medical training and equipment someplace uh. quickly to aid uh, to aid in the rescue and to stabilize the patient. I mean, once you've stabilized, I mean, for the vast majority of injuries um, sustained, once you've stabilized the patient. You've bought them as much time as you need to get them to a real hospital, to a real surgeon. Um, so, I mean, that's it, again, there's no end to how useful this technology can be if they can make it efficient and really effective. Mm. Well, the price of fuel at the moment. Uh... <laughs> right. Well, that it's, yeah, the cost of fuel is like, you know what? They can bleed out. That'll be uh, aircraft fuel, though, won't it? That's obviously it sounds like actually if you listen yeah. to the video, I'll put the I'll put the link in the chat. Uh, but mm -hmm. when you listen to it, it sounds like a, a, an airplane, like mm -hmm. the engine starting, you know, the kind of like yeah, um, whatever that noise is. Yeah, um, it's uh it's interesting. I mean, again, what kind of fuel you would use? That's a great question. Is it gonna be something like kerosene or jet because kerosene and jet fuel are not as far apart as one would think. Um Again, could it be, but you you never know. Do you want to answer that? No. Go away, Tex. I'll call him later. Was it Tex? Yeah. I think he forgot about the time the time oh, shift. Tex, yeah. Tex is just calling to harass. I called it a jetpack. It's a jetpack, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Put that in the chat for him what's going on. Uh, should go and have a listen to it. It sounds amazing. So... Um, yes, and happy fourth. Yeah, Turn and it was well. Canada Day on Friday. Oh right. Yeah. So yeah. to to the to all the Canadians out there, happy can happy Canada Day. Happy Canadian Day or Canada Day. Yeah, Canada Day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we 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 hey, you know what? As much grief as I will give Canada for you know people not actually living there, I appreciate y'all. Y'all are out there in those in those. In those really harsh and unforgiving maple syrup mines, mining for maple syrup, believe me, I understand how hard that can be. And I appreciate y'all. It's the fourth for us. It's the first for y'all. But we all love that maple syrup that you're out there, you know, in the mines digging for every day. And we appreciate all y'all. So cheers. Cheers to all of you. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking out now and there's loads of jetpack jetpack adventure go to the maldives mm -hmm. you could probably like hire one and do it yeah oh yeah i was looking at like it's like the cost of renting one for like an hour is like four or five grand <laughs> yeah okay i mean um, i get it and there's this one 
it's probably a fuel surcharge of an extra grand because of the cost of fuel now. Yeah, exactly. It's too expensive now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, to do anything. Oh, wow. These guys here. Oh, no. How do I get on here? These are crazy. Uh, I'm not quick enough right now. At least if you fall, if you come off it, you know, you can't be that bad being in the water. Oh, those waterboard things? Yeah. That is crazy, isn't it? Yes. The power of water, though. Right. Yeah, it's just using... And it makes a lot of sense because it's just using uh, water pressure to do it. And, yeah, I mean, Can, I'd try it. Yeah, I mean, would you go to work on this? Would it save you any time? You know, I mean, what what other reason would people be using these? Um, yeah, this is just for fun. I mean, there's that's all there is to it. This is just fun stuff. It's not really applicable. But the technology, though, you know, some things they've learned from that technology has allowed them to to build like that jetpack, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It does look like fun, though. It does yeah, it does. Look like fun. Um, I say I'd like to give it a try, but I'm over here afraid of heights. So <laughs> I'd, I'd get up there and I'd be like, screw all of this. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I, I like to say, I don't really have a fear of heights. I have a fear of being high up in something that's unstable. Oh, yeah. That's my, pro like, I have no problem with heights, really. Narrow ledges. Heights yeah. and narrow ledges don't mix. Yeah, or if it's something that feels like even the slightest bit unbalanced or or sh or rickety, my I'm my subconscious is like, nope, you're gonna fall. Don't yes. do it. Yeah, step ladders, step ladders are the worst, aren't they? The simplest of things, but oh yeah, you only need to be mm -hmm. a few steps up, and then you start wobbling and uh, yeah. Uh, well, look, what are you are you looking for something now? I was looking something up, but uh, it's not pulling up. We're good. I was just. Okay. It was more, it was a continuation on the rocket pack thing, but that's fine. Yes. All right. Well, look, guys, we're going to uh, end the show now. I've got uh, Big Fat Odyssey in 15 yeah. minutes over on the Big Fat Odyssey channel. It's uh, Sunday Conversations with Iron Dogger and myself. If any yeah. of you guys want to pop over and say hello, um, hopefully we'll do it. We'll start a quarter of an hour earlier if we can do next week. If that doesn't interfere with you. And so we could sure. do an hour uh, instead of 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, and we'll do that then. And hopefully I will have been up to Wall's Water and got a feel of the place. Might do a little video up there and see nice. if I can. I might get a hold of that guy and see yeah. if I can do an interview with him. That um, sounds like fun. Yeah, because he's, there's a bit more to the story. There's a quite a few reports and he's people are basically, a few people have kind of laughed at him and he's like, no, I know what's going on. I know what I saw. Really? kind of thing and there was another fisherman who saw it as well as another witness so i'll get it all together in a video and um we can talk about it next week yeah i'd love that yeah no i'm it you, you know i'm a big fan of water cryptids i yeah. really am like this everyone's like so you're a bigfooter no but you saw a pterosaur yes so pterosaur is your favorite no i like water cryptids like <laughs> i love i love things under the water so i'm really interested to hear about uh what's going on there I, this is the first i'm hearing about it so i'm i'm intrigued it was meant to be. It was obviously meant to be. It was. Um, now, have I got another email? Oh, sorry, Sharon. Oh, yes. Um, oh, and Max. Oh, heck. <laughs> Sharon's just sent me this. Thank you. Um, this is a huge 600-pound monster fish. Called a living diet sturgeon, yeah. Oh heck, yeah. Oh sturgeons, they're monsters. But I've I've never now I then again I don't know all that much about sturgeons, but I don't think they would attack a bird. No. Um. And Max sent me um something as well. Oh yeah, a goose fish. Oh, they're um pretty strange looking um i've never heard of a goose fish well i'm gonna show you now there 48 inch size 248 inch and 50 pounds 
also known oh. as fish. These are living nightmare in appearance, although they're actually rather docile, providing you don't get too close. To okay, them. okay, I I know what this is. I've never I've never heard them as a as a goose fish though. Okay, I've seen them before. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's an unfortunate looking fish. Yeah. Oh heck, mm -mm. goose fish. Never ever heard of that. Oh, it's got something a sea bass. Oh wow. It's not even touching the sides, is it? No, that's a, a that's a big fish. That looks like it's in a tank. I hope it isn't. I think it is, isn't it? Oh, yep. Yeah, it's in. A, yeah, that's in a thing. Oh, it's in an aquarium. Well, it's fascinating. Hmm. Fascinating. Hopefully, I'll have some answers uh, to the story next week. Uh, thanks to Max. Thanks, Sharon, for sending those in, and. Um, Hopefully see you over on Bigfoot Odyssey. If not, we'll, we'll see you in the week at some point. Um, hopefully. Uh, if I don't see you then, I'll see you another time. All right, everyone. Take care. Good night. Good night.